Hello, our viewers of the internet. We want to thank the Lord for giving us an opportunity to speak to you through our moment of divine inspiration again this week. And today we want to speak to you from the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, verses 19 to 25. Hebrews 10, verses 19 to 25. The Bible says that, uh, Therefore, believers, since we have confidence and full freedom to enter the holy place by the means of the blood of Jesus Christ, by this new and living way which he initiated and opened for us through the veil that, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great and wonderful priest over the house of God, let us approach God with a true and a sincere heart in unqualified assurance of faith, having had our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering, for the promise is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. And let us consider how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds, not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let me first of all just begin by talking about this scripture from the beginning of it before we get to where we are right now. Paul is writing and he's encouraging the people of this church about meeting together as believers and as brethren. And it is important that when we come together to meet as believers, first of all, we have to agree that it is important for us to meet and to worship God. Now, one main reason why Christ came on earth and why God sent his own son to die for us is so that we can be reconciled back to God. The other reason why Christ came on earth to die is because the blood that he shed was supposed to reconcile the fathers and the son. And uh, he came so that he may redeem us. And he came so that he may connect us back to the love that we had, we had with the Father. He as well came to the earth so that he can establish the kingdom of God. Because that was the only way that the will of the Father could be done on earth. Through his kingdom on earth. Therefore, it means that identifying yourself with the kingdom of God and identifying yourself with the death of Christ is a guarantee that you, when you worship him, you can enter. Because the Bible says that we have got a priest who is there and he has given out his life, his life for us. Therefore, it means that identifying with this priest who died for us is a guarantee that you can access the kingdom and the presence of God. But that alone is not enough. Today, let me bring to us, to our attention, different things also that can make us to access the, the, the presence of God. There are many things that a believer should always do to ensure that they do not miss the presence of God. Because above every other thing, what you require in your life as a believer is the presence of God. So, number one, you need to identify with the death of Christ. Live alone that, but also with his kingdom. Therefore, it means that after you identify yourself with the death of Christ, this gives you courage. It gives you the courage to approach the throne of Christ because you know that there is a priest over the house. There is a priest that will listen to your petitions and to the desire of your heart. That alone is not enough. There are many other things that a believer should do. There are many other things that a believer should observe to ensure that they are always in the presence of God. The second thing that you need to do is do not miss out on your personal time with God. People tend to forget that worship is not a one-day thing. Worship is something that is not only done on Monday or on Sunday or on Saturday. The day does not matter. What matters is worship. So it does not matter whether you go to worship on this particular day or this other day. What is important is, do you really worship God? Because some of us might think that we worship God, but we have misplaced our worship. So the day is not the important thing. The most important thing is you having a personal relationship with God. I know many people say that they are... They have believed on Christ personally. And if you have believed in him as your personal savior, the way we say it, then it means that you also need to have a personal time with him. Corporate worship is good, but personal worship is better. Because when you worship God as an individual, you have the time and the, 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 the space to, for, to speak freely to him and honestly to him. And you also give him the space to speak to you. Speaking to God is good, but you should also give him the time to also talk to you 
because many believers believe that prayer is just talking to God. Prayer is also listening from God. Therefore, I encourage you to always have a personal time to hear from God and even to speak to him. How do you hear from him? By reading his word every day, meditating on it until it begins changing your life. So, Put that in mind. Don't miss on your personal time with God. The third thing that you need to do is come with an expectant heart in the presence of God. Now, if you come just to worship God because you have just come, you will never receive anything from him. People who come with expectant hearts to hear and to receive from God always live fulfilled. A heart that is expectant is a heart that can easily receive from God. You can come to meet your fellow brethren as it is written that do not neglect the meeting of brethren. Come to meet brethren when you already have an expectance, when you already have something that you are expecting. You have an anticipation, something that you know that you want God to speak over. Come when you know that you have something that you need him to address even in your life. Because coming to the presence of God is coming so that he might address the various things that you're going through. He might be able to to speak over your life so that it does not remain the same. That is why you need to always speak to him. So when you come in the presence of God, anytime you raise your voice to worship him, always have an expectant heart because an expectant heart is a heart that receives. Do not say like people say that we come to the presence of God and we don't want to live the way we came. But come with a heart that is expectant because when you come with a heart that is expectant, then believe you me, you will not live the way you came. Thank you so much and may the Lord bless you abundantly even as you continue with your week.